the live music capital of the South plays host to Thursday, Night Smackdown. We are here in Raleigh, North Carolina for what promises to be a night full of championship implications. Carmelo Hayes, hot off the heels of retaining his United States gold last week, now moves into an open challenge in tonight's main event. The ever fighting champion, proving once again to be one of one, but can he run it back? Who's gonna accept the challenge? US titles on the line in your main event. Also, for the first time since Bad Blood, the Apex Predator, Randy Orton, returns to action. And after coming up short inside Hell in the Cell, what is next for the Viper? We find out right here in Raleigh, North Carolina. But we kick things off tonight on the path to Survivor Series, hoping to determine a number one contender for the World Heavyweight title. We take you back to last week on SmackDown. Ilya Dragunov set for a tag team main event alongside the World Heavyweight Champion Cody Rhodes against Drew McIntyre and Sheamus. Unfortunately, Dragunov never getting the chance to make the ring walk. As you can see, that calf of Dragunov catching that glass window moments after this beatdown by Drew McIntyre. Ilya was sent to a local medical facility and unfortunately was not able to compete in last week's main event. John Cena, of course, filling the role for Ilya Dragunov, teaming up alongside the World Heavyweight Champion Cody Rhodes in a successful tag team outing. But now Drew McIntyre, somebody who has been hot on the heels of Cody for months, looks to get back to the dance if and only if he can keep down the franchise. John Cena returning to SmackDown earlier this month. And he is back with one goal in mind to become a 17-time World Heavyweight Champion! And his opponent from West Newbury, Massachusetts, weighing in at 251 pounds, the greatest John Cena stepping up to the plate, teaming up with the American Nightmare seven nights ago. Cena pinning the Celtic Warrior Sheamus in last week's main event. And what we saw moments removed from the other side of the bell was John Cena seemingly drawing a line in the sand with his tag team partner. Cena saying, listen, I got the utmost respect for Cody Rhodes, but I'm back for business and I'm back for the big gold belt. Cena wants a shot at Rhodes. God knows Drew McIntyre has been obsessed with winning back the championship that he lost at last year's Survivor Series event. One of these men are making their way to Orlando, Florida on Saturday night, November the 16th. Cody Rhodes awaits the winner of this contest. The bell has sounded. We are underway in the PNC Arena here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Happy Halloween here from Thursday Night SmackDown. Drew McIntyre and John Cena locking horns in a matchup to contest the number one contendership for the World Heavyweight title at Survivor Series. Survivor Series already shaping up to be one hell of an event. The news we found out on Monday Night Raw, the legendary War Games matchup taking place on Saturday night, November the 16th, live from the Kia Center in the Sunshine State of Florida. The Raw All-Star is gonna be inside not one but two rings at Survivor Series. But now we look to find the SmackDown main event for that night as well. As we talked about, it was last year at Survivor Series that Drew McIntyre's 267-day reign as World Heavyweight Champion came crashing down in what was voted by the fans as the 2023 Match of the Year against the Ring General Gunther. Drew McIntyre ever since has been obsessed with getting back that championship, the championship that he wakes up for in the morning, that he fights for each and every time he enters the squared circle. McIntyre! as he sends John Cena for an amusement park ride, will leave no stone unturned in his pursuit of winning back the World Heavyweight title. John Cena, on the other hand, came back to SmackDown earlier this month, was immediately met with some issues with Gunther and the rest of Imperium. 
Of course, a big time six man tag team victory at Bad Blood in Boston a few weeks ago. John Cena once again stepping up alongside Cody Rhodes last week here on SmackDown. And now John Cena looks to find his way to Survivor Series, the same place that he has once won a world championship before. Either way you swing it, Cody Rhodes is going to have his hands full in Orlando, Florida on the 16th of November. John Cena, of course, staring eye to eye with the American Nightmare seven nights ago. Now looking to squeeze the life out of Drew McIntyre. Easier said than done when you got that ginormous individual in your grasp. McIntyre giving Cena a fight. And a neck breaker for good measures. Still to come tonight here on SmackDown. Of course, Santos Escobar making his return last week, costing Andrade a matchup against Wesley. Angel Garza stepping up on behalf of Andrade. He will meet Santos Escobar later tonight. Plus, the United States Championship Open Challenge from Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo Hayes, of course, retaining his title in the two out of three falls matchup against Ludwig Kaiser last week here on SmackDown. 48 hours later, walked in a Halloween havoc for No Nation Gaming Channel members. Replay available now. Issued another open challenge on that night. Carlito. Former United States Champion right here on SmackDown many years ago, returning to the WWE and accepting that challenge, unfortunately was turned away by the man they call him. Remains to be seen who Carmelo Hayes will meet in tonight's main event for the United States Championship. Right now, the eyes of the world are on who will be the number one contender to the world title at Survivor Series. Cody Rhodes has had one hell of a reign as champion thus far, of course, defeating the ring general Guther to win the gold. Just a few months back at SummerSlam, retaining the championship over Drew McIntyre at no mercy in September. Hold that thought, John Cena going to the well with one of his best maneuvers, a five knuckle shuffle. Unfortunately for Cena, this matchup is not over yet. Drew McIntyre, we talked about it before, I'm sure we'll say it a million times over, will stop at nothing to win back the World Heavyweight Championship. Obsessed with that gold, and if Cena is the roadblock, rest assured McIntyre will do anything to get by him. Cena dishing out a little you can't see me, little five knuckle shuffle, but the Scottish warrior is reeling. I'll look to be going for a Glasgow kiss that time. Cena saw it coming, had enough separation there to ensure there was no impact off McIntyre's maneuver. McIntyre rolled to the outside, trying to create a little distance, maybe get some R&R. &R. McIntyre once again playing a game of cat and mouse with John Cena. I believe the Scottish Warrior is just looking to regroup here. Cena may have the number of McIntyre, maybe in his mind after last week's main event, dropping Drew right on the apron. If that doesn't take a pound out of Drew McIntyre, I don't know what will. Just as bad as McIntyre wants another shot at Cody Rhodes, John Cena's out to make history. There's a much needed and well-timed reversal there by McIntyre, who's now just looking to stop the heart and the soul out of the franchise player. John Cena on the tail once again. McIntyre trying to dictate the pace here. Black hole slam, dead center of the ring. Drew's fired up. And you gotta commend McIntyre, like him or not, for continuing to push through the punishment, especially after getting dropped on the apron a few moments ago. Cena trying to fight, McIntyre trying to fight, and there's a reversal. High stakes, high reward action right here on SmackDown. McIntyre now, small package on Cena. This one's not over. Drew McIntyre has left Cody Rhodes laying on numerous occasions, but he needs to do it between the bells, and he wants to do it at Survivor Series to win back the World Heavyweight Championship he lost nearly 12 months ago. John Cena struggling, starting to slow down as McIntyre is revving up the engines. In the corner, this is not where Cena wants to be. McIntyre just collapsing Cena. Hold on. Well, that's a familiar symphony. The Man Dragon, Ilya Dragunov, is in Raleigh, North Carolina. Dragunov staring eye to eye with a man who has caused him so much pain and punishment. Cena from behind. Attitude adjustment to McIntyre. 
An eye for an eye. Dragunov doesn't forgive. He does not forget. Cena's on the way to Survivor Series. John Cena, by hook or by crook, taking advantage of Ilya Dragunov's presence. And, oh man, business continuing to pick up here in Raleigh. The World Heavyweight Champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes is in the house. Cody now stares eye to eye. A similar situation to what closed us out last week right here on SmackDown. But it is now Cody who draws the line in the sand. Respect absolutely there between these two icons, but only one man can hoist the championship high in the sky. Cody Rhodes meets John Cena Saturday night, November the 16th at Survivor Series. When the tension rises and the war on the battlefield begins, there is only one thing for these superstars to do. Survive! Coming your way on Saturday night, November 16th, from the Kia Center in Orlando, Florida. Witness the 2024 edition of the Fall Classic as the superstars of Raw and SmackDown, along with No Nation Gaming channel memberships, proudly present Survivor Series! We are back live here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Zoe Stark set for a one-on-one -on -one action on what could be a huge opportunity against the Women's World Champion Roxanne Perez. Perez cheating Stark out of a victory several weeks back on Velocity. Stark has not forgotten and is looking to get her hands on the Women's World Champion and again, maybe create some opportunities for herself here on SmackDown. Zoe's been alongside Shayna Baszler for several months in the tag team division, looking to go it alone and prove her worth here on the blue brand. Oh, well, wait a minute. Well, this is not Roxanne Perez. Uh, I, I don't know what's going on out in the truck. Is this a mistake or... Or is Roxanne Perez just have the greatest Halloween costume we've ever seen? Well, what is this? And representing the Kabuki Warriors from Yamaguchi, Japan, Kairi Singh! Uh, okay, well, Mike Rome's making the announcement. And I'm getting word of my headset. This match has been altered? Okay, I don't know. I don't have an answer for you folks, but Kyrie Sane is now taking on Zoe Stark. Well, I thought as announced last week, as advertised, Women's World Champion Roxanne Perez was supposed to be here on her show, wrestling Zoe Stark one-on-one, -on -one, non-title action. Well, of course, we saw Perez in action in the six-woman tag this past Monday Night on Raw in a promotional battle. I don't know. I don't know if Roxanne Perez thinks she's just going to continue to make her own rules. She's really good at that. I don't know if she's in the building. I don't know if she's no show. I don't know what the case is, ladies and gentlemen. I got about as many answers as all you do. But this is what I'm being told. The run sheet's changed, and Kyrie Sane's now taking on Zoe Stark. Well, this is certainly not what Zoe Stark was expecting upon making the flight to Raleigh, North Carolina here tonight. And clearly Stark in no mood for whatever games Roxanne Perez is trying to play. It was just a few weeks ago on Velocity. Stark went one-on-one -on -one with Perez. Perez exposed the turnbuckle, sent Stark right into the steel, followed that up with a Pop Rocks, and stole away that victory from Zoe Stark. Stark throwing down the gauntlet. What a rematch right here tonight on SmackDown. As advertised, it was announced just seven nights ago. And evidently, Roxanne Perez, all we can say is all we can assume is that she continues to make her own rules and has that, well, damn it, I'll say it, piss poor attitude that she's had since the month of July. You know, she may be successful. She may be the women's world champion, but she's clearly making no friends. Maybe besides Rawls, Cora, Jade, but that's a whole nother story over on the red brand. 
Nonetheless, we got Kyrie Sane and Zoe Stark here on Thursday Night SmackDown. Kyrie Sane, somebody who has been up and down in action as of late in terms of winning losses. Oh, it was just last week that Kyrie Sane, alongside the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, picked up a tag team victory over Zelina Vega and Raquel Rodriguez. Obviously, Kyrie has aligned herself with two of her old friends, the current women's tag team champions. Here the WWE, that being the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, and of course the genius of the sky, Io Sky, who have accompanied her out to ringside tonight. Zoe Stark obviously was not prepared. No shade of Azer to watch her back like she has been. Stark very familiar with Asuka and Io. Plenty of tag team bouts over the last few months over the tag team championships. Man, what a half Nelson by Stark that time. So he obviously was hoping for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity, looking to do things by herself tonight, but Roxanne Perez and even the Kabuki Warriors as a whole have flipped the switch on Stark. I'll tell you, that is a group of women who is making no friends here on SmackDown. Roxanne Perez does things her way. Kabuki Warriors been pushing their weight around, but Zoe Stark looking to hang in there nonetheless. Boot to the jaw. Kyrie Sane still to this matchup, at least for now. Zoe Stark. You gotta give her credit. She's improved a ton throughout 2024 and now put in a situation tonight where she's gotta think on her feet and find a way to keep down somebody she was not prepared for, Kyrie Sane. Kyrie's been extremely active here on SmackDown ever since her return back in the first half of this month. Picked up victories over Zelina Vega, the tag team victory last week, of course. She's had some issues with Raquel Rodriguez, and now Zoe Stark mouthing off her. I don't know who's got whose attention, but Asuka and Io mouthing off to Zoe inside the ring, and Stark's had enough. She has had her own issues. Plenty of history with the tag team champions. Not looking to see Asuka and Io get in her way tonight. Crossbody takes down Asuka momentarily, but she left herself wide open for an attack by Kyrie. Zoe Stark still into this matchup again. You got to give her credit. It's really broken out of her shell this year. Taken under the wing by Shayna Baszler. Former tag team champion Zoe Stark has been successful throughout 2024. Kyrie Sane looking to prove once again why she is a former NXT Women's Champion. Mae Young Classic winner, tag team champion in her own right. Zoe Stark with another pump kick. I'll tell you, just when Kyrie's thinks she's got Stark down and out, Stark continues to explode just like that. Zoe looking to send a message to the Women's World Champion wherever she may lie tonight. Kyrie Sane up the reversal, another springboard. Stark had it scouted. Inside cradle, Kyrie might have got caught. Not over yet, Jessica Carr only calls for a two. Women's Division on SmackDown heating up week in and week out. It's because of action like this. Another kick to the side of the head. Kyrie Sane may have the numbers, but Zoe Stark is fired up. Kyrie Sane stars! C360! Into the cover she goes. Big time victory for Zoe Stark here tonight. Well, Stark came to Raleigh, North Carolina, thinking she was going to get another round with Roxanne Perez, a matchup that could have potentially put her in line for the women's world title. Stark forced to think on her feet, and she proved her worth against Kyrie Sane, nonetheless. Here is your winner, Zoe Stark. Oh, wait a minute. Perez is in the building, and she just cracked Stark over the skull with the women's world title. Roxanne Perez and her bad attitude, continuing to make her own rules. Something's got to give with that woman. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. 
hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. This past Sunday afternoon in Manhattan, New York, the quarterfinal round of the Cruiserweight Classic commenced. NXT's Javon Evans, one-on-one -on -one with SmackDown's Wes Lee, who was riding a high after last week's victory here in the Blue Brand. Javon giving him a fight, but in the end it was Wes Lee who exploded onto the scene and punched his ticket to the semifinals. Later that afternoon, it was one half of the WWE Tag Team Champions in Dragon Lee taking on the man whose mantra is never slowed down and Nathan Frazier. Yet another fast-paced and exciting contest between these two individuals, LWO's Dragon Lee moving on after an exciting bout. And we now look on to this Sunday, live at 12 noon Eastern time, the final two quarterfinal bouts in the CWC. SmackDown's Chad Gable, one-on-one -on -one with TNA wrestling legend in Frankie Kazarian. Also going down in just a few days, it is the Cruiserweight Championship bout between Tyler Bay and Pete Dunne. Bay continuing to defend the gold throughout the tournament. The opportunity now goes to the Bruiserweight. The Cruiserweight Classic continues live this Sunday afternoon at 12 noon Eastern time. But after surviving Hell in a Cell, the Apex Predator is back on the hunt. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from St. Louis, Missouri. Weighing in at 275 pounds. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Austin, the Austin Theory. Ray. Austin Theory's charging Randy Orton from behind. Just leveled the Viper in the back of the skull. What the hell is going on? Theory, Waller, and Orton have had a partnership since what? Ever since June, July at least? Theory's ambushing Orton. Orton was set for action here on SmackDown, but one half of A-Town Down Under, Austin Theory, is ambushing the Viper. Well, Randy Orton's obviously had plenty of blood on his hands in recent months. I'm not saying this is deserved, but it certainly raises some questions as to why Austin Theory's out here right now and is exposing the announce table. Well, we learned in recent weeks just why that partnership, that trio had come to be between A-Town Down Under and Randy Orton. Orton promising A-Town Down Under, they would, he would help him get back the tag team titles in return. Theory and Waller would help him get back the world title. Obviously, Orton falling short in Hell in the Cell, and last time we saw Theory, he was a sacrificial lamb to Cody Rhodes a few weeks ago. Orton trying to fight back, and Theory dropping him with an A-Town down at ringside. I got no answers, but nothing but questions. Theory ambushing Randy Orton here on SmackDown, and has now turned his attention to the announce table. Well, this is not gonna be good. Orton, just a few weeks removed from Hell in a Cell, now gets sent crashing through the announce table by a man he was recently partnered with. Well, safe to say, those ties have been severed for one reason or another. Austin Theory's had enough, and Austin Theory just sent a loud message cutting the head off the snake here on SmackDown. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle coming your way exclusively each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code, follow on TikTok, and don't miss a second of Velocity. We're back live on SmackDown. I'm still in a bit of shock of what we saw a few moments ago. 
Randy Orton was set for action, but ambushed by a man who has been by his side over the last few months in Austin Theory. You can't help but think, did Grayson Waller have any input or did Theory act on his own? I got no answers, ladies and gentlemen. This, this night has been full of questions and unfortunately not a lot of answers, but nonetheless, we are moving on. Angel Garza set for one-on-one -on -one action. With a man who returned last week with a vengeance and the emperor of Lucha Libre, Santos Escobar. Escobar put on the shelf by Andrade back in September. He is head hunting for El Idolo. Santos Escobar going down with a couple of broken ribs thanks to Andrade back in early September. An attack on Velocity, Angel and Birdo certainly doing a number a few days later in a tag team title bout. Escobar has not forgotten about the damage that was done by Andrade. And although the LWO and Rey Mysterio and Dragon Lee might have gotten back the tag team titles from Angel and Birdo, Santos has a personal score to settle with the head of that trio in Andrade. Well, he is going to have to wait his turn to get in the ring with a man who is currently at ringside in El Idolo. Tonight, he draws Angel inside of that ring. You got to believe Santos Escobar sees this as just a stepping stone to get to Andrade one way or another. As for Angel tonight, I am sure strategic words were put into his mind by Andrade to seek and destroy Santos Escobar here tonight. If Angel, Birdo, and Andrade had their way, Escobar's return would be a short-lived one. They'd be sending them back on the shelf. Remains to be seen how Escobar is going to fare tonight as he gets sent right over the top rope by one half of a former tag team champion here on SmackDown and Angel. Rocky Wild, Cruz del Toro accompanying Santos Escobar tonight. The original trio of Legado del Fantasma now wearing the colors of the Latino World Order. Angel taking his eye. All Santos Escobar looked at Joaquin Wilde and Del Toro at ringside, and now with Santos, instead of revving up the engines, he's gonna slow things down, go for a submission hold on Angel. And try to wear him down a little bit with this gory special, but there's Angel. Use momentum and flip it out of it. Santos Escobar delivers a bicycle knee. Santos has gotta be thinking about getting back inside of this ring over the last two months. Marching through Angel, Birdo if he has to, and fighting Andrade on the other side of the tracks. Santos Escobar, former tag team champion, former three-time cruiserweight champion. Andrade take, take it away, excuse us. Over two months of Santos' career, Santos Escobar is looking for his pound of flesh. Been one hell of a night here on SmackDown, interesting to say the least. Issues coming to a head between Ilya Dragunov and Drew McIntyre, costing McIntyre his shot at Survivor Series. John Cena now on his way to Orlando next month. Kyrie Sane stepping in for Roxanne Perez for one reason or another, only for Perez to ambush Zoe Stark after that bout. And what we saw moments ago, Austin Theory attacking Randy Orton and laying in the waist here at ringside. Questions, no answers. Smackdown hot and heavy on Halloween night nonetheless. Santos Escobar getting caught that powerbomb a few moments ago. Gives Angel a little ride on the canvas for his troubles. Going for the cover this time. Going to take more to keep down. A man who has seen success in recent months. Angel and Berto really bringing themselves to promise here on Smackdown. Attacking Santos and Ray all the way back in July. Didn't want to wait for their opportunity. They took their opportunity. Aligning themselves with Andrade, winning the Tag Team Championships. They have seen a lot of Ws over the last few months. Can they keep it up? Santos Escobar, Meteora in the corner, follows it up with a Phantom Driver on Angel. Thanks for coming. Santos Escobar is out for revenge. A successful return to SmackDown as we shift gears to Survivor Series on Saturday night, November the 16th. 
We talked about it earlier on, but the Monday Night Raw main event that sent shockwaves to the WWE on Monday. The legendary War Games matchup approaches. Eight Raw All-Stars gonna collide in two rings with one giant steel cage. And I can't believe it, ladies and gentlemen, but that's not the only War Games match taking place in Orlando next month. Just signed, courtesy of SmackDown, Women's World Champion Roxanne Perez teams with Kyrie Sane and the tag champs Asuka and Io Sky as they battle Shayna Baszler, Zoe Stark, Selena Vega, and Raquel Rodriguez. It is a War Games matchup. Saturday night, November 16th, courtesy of SmackDown. Survivor Series shaping up to be one legendary event. War Games approaches. Tonight here on SmackDown, Drew McIntyre's bout with John Cena momentarily interrupted thanks to the arrival of Ilya Dragunov. John Cena taking advantage of the distraction, the attitude adjustment to the Scottish Warrior. Cena on his way to Survivor Series next month. Of course, drawing the line in the sand, standing toe-to-toe -to -toe with the man who currently holds the gold, the World Heavyweight Champion, Cody Rhodes. But John Cena earning his opportunity, and it is going down in the Kia Center on Saturday night, November the 16th in Orlando. The franchise is chasing 17th trip to the top of the mountain. Will he win the big gold belt as he battles the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes? And another bout that has been signed for Survivor Series. Drew McIntyre's making his way to Orlando to go one-on-one -on -one with the Man Dragon, Ilya Dragunov. These two men met all the way back at SummerSlam. The blood has only continued to boil ever since. But McIntyre and Dragunov gonna have some kind of stipulation on this matchup, but the question remains as to who's gonna make that decision. Next Thursday night on SmackDown, Dragunov runs it back with the Celtic Warrior Sheamus. If Dragunov wins, he chooses the stipulation for Survivor Series. If Sheamus wins, McIntyre chooses the stipulation for Survivor Series. Sheamus, Dragunov next week on SmackDown. Also going down next Thursday night, the D'Angelo family showcasing footage last week of an ambush on Montez Ford in the parking lot. Angelo Dawkins going it alone and looks for revenge as he goes one-on-one -on -one with Stax, Channing Lorenzo next Thursday night. Roxanne Perez might have escaped Zoe Stark earlier tonight, but she is going to have nowhere to run next week. The Women's World Championship will be contested as the Prodigy puts the gold on the line against the rough and tough upstart in Zoe Stark. That's next Thursday night in Jacksonville, Florida on SmackDown. But we still got a main event. The U.S. title is on the line. It is main event time here on Thursday Night SmackDown. Halloween evening, the United States Championship is on the line. They call him one of one. He calls himself him, the United States Champion, Carmelo Hayes. Melo winning that championship back on July the 5th at the Great American Bash edition of SmackDown, keeping down Ricochet. He has since retained the gold over Chad Gable at Saturday Night's main event in August. Not one, but two successful title defenses against Ludwig Kaiser just as soon as last week in that two out of three falls matchup. And then just 48 hours later, Mello issuing an open challenge at Halloween Havoc for No Nation Gaming channel members. Mello keeping down a former champion and the returning Carlito. Mello looking to be a fighting champion once again, issuing this open challenge here on Halloween night. 
We got ghosts, we got ghouls, we got goblins, but who is gonna be the challenger for the United States gold? Wait just a second! Look who has arrived on Thursday Night SmackDown! Well, this man, along with his brother, banished from Monday Night Raw back at No Mercy in September thanks to the Judgment Day. And for the first time since that night in Montreal, main event! Jey Uso is marching down the aisle with purpose. No Jimmy in sight. Jay's on his own. It's just him, Us, and Jey Uso is here on SmackDown. Raleigh, North Carolina, on their feet for the man who has accepted Carmelo Hayes' open challenge. Mello once again putting himself in a predicament to have to think on his feet. Put together a blueprint on the fly. Jey Uso predominantly a tag team superstar throughout his career. But a man who knows a thing or two about holding championship gold. How will Carmelo Hayes fare against a man who for years has been calling himself the main event? Jey Uso steps into the main event here on SmackDown and is looking to win his first singles championship here tonight. High stakes, high reward, the pressure's on. Let's set things down to the ring to Mike Rome for your match introductions. Introducing the challenger from San Francisco, California, weighing in at 242 pounds. Man. And his opponent from Boston, Massachusetts, weighing in at 210 pounds, the WWE United States Champion, Carmelo Hayes. Carmelo Hayes putting the red, white, blue, and gold on the line. He could not have been expecting a man who was banished from Monday Night Raw upwards of a month ago to arrive here on SmackDown on this night of all nights and accept his challenge for that championship. Carmelo Hayes, a fighting champion, putting his own back against the wall. Will he be able to fight out this competition or will Jey Uso shock the world and become the United States Champion? What a main event we have on hand from Raleigh, North Carolina on Halloween night. Challenger Jey Uso, champion Carmelo Hayes, we are underway. Senior referee Charles Robinson wearing the zebra stripes as Jey Uso looks to dictate the pace in the early moments of this matchup. Carmelo Hayes has proven to be resilient throughout his championship reign thus far. Was able to outlast Chad Gable in his hometown in Minneapolis, Minnesota a couple of months ago. Not one but two outings against Ludwig Kaiser. One of those coming just last week. Kaiser went up one to nothing in the two out of three falls. Mello was able to bounce back. And of course outlasting former WWE superstar returning to a WWE ring. And Carlito this past Saturday at Halloween Havoc. Carmelo Hayes sticking to what works, sticking and moving, using his speed and agility to his advantage. Jey Uso's got to be cautious. He may have the surprise factor on his hand, but he cannot underestimate the man they call him. When Melo shoots, Melo, more likely than not, ain't going to miss. Carmelo Hayes has really broken out on SmackDown in 2024. Become one of the faces of Thursday nights. Jey Uso looking to knock him off his pedestal. Early pinfall here. This one's not over yet. Jey Uso has called himself the main event for several years. The Usos walked away from this industry upwards of two years ago. Having accomplished everything there was to do in the tag team division. Fought everybody there was to fight. Returned all the way back in January to face the new competition to win the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, which is just what they did. What they did not see coming is a 
damn near nine-month war with the Judgment Day that, as we've already talked about, booted them off Monday Night Raw back at No Mercy in September. And now Jey Uso looking for a singles opportunity, riding solo here on SmackDown and accepting this open challenge tonight. Can main event Jey Uso prove his worth in singles competition? Might have got caught by Melo that time. Not just yet, but Jay, as we mentioned, has got to be cautious. Melo going for the float over again. Jay saw it coming. Ooh. Raleigh, North Carolina, seeing two fan favorites battling out over the prestigious United States title. Jay with the Melo into the corner. Drop kick sends Melo right to the buckles. Jay Uso, predominantly a tag team superstar, not somebody who has seen that too much singles action throughout his career. Melo may have the edge here tonight. Melo once again surprising Jay with that pinfall, and I think Melo knew he wasn't going to get the victory that time. Just used it as a means to get momentum back on his side. That's exactly what he did. Jay now caught on the apron. Carmelo Hayes knocking him down to ringside, sending him for an amusement park ride. The United States champion all over main event Jay as soon as he gets the opportunity. Carmelo Hayes realizes he put himself in this predicament tonight with this open challenge. And now with Jay Uso. Arriving on SmackDown, Carmelo Hayes not looking to leave any stone unturned. Needs to empty the tank in order to keep down his challenger. Jay looking to be struggling. Oh, never, maybe not. Catches Melo as he's looking to be eyeing up a springboard. Tit for tat, reversal for reversal that time. Jay Uso now create a little separation here. Not trying to allow Carmelo Hayes to rally. In this main event affair, sends Melo into the ropes. Somehow and dropped by Jay. And that is what Carmelo Hayes cannot allow. Jay Uso to pull out some of his signature maneuvers in hopes of winning the United States Championship. Melo hoisted on top. Jay Uso extremely comfortable with his feet off the ground. Melo once again on the shoulders. Jay Uso fall away. Crash and burn goes the champ. Raleigh, North Carolina on their feet as Carmelo Hayes continues to survive. The surviving isn't thriving. Melo looking up at the lights at the PNC Arena. Jay Uso now all over the champion. It's been a very interesting matchup on both sides of the ring. Have not seen a lot of hesitation. Fight feet have been on the gas pedal to say the least. Melo once again using that pinfall to muscle down Jay. A couple of lariats knocks Jay off his feet. Jay sidesteps the drop kick. Carmelo Hayes able to get out of the way of that right hand. Several of strikes down goes the challenger. The United States champion not looking to miss here tonight on SmackDown. He issued the open challenge. He does not want to look like a Halloween fool against Jay Uso. Right now, he's got Jay just where he needs him, down on the canvas. And if Melo can continue to stack the offense, he may find a way to retain the United States Championship. Jay Uso brought to his feet by Carmelo Hayes. Will it be a trick? Will it be a treat? Carmelo Hayes scoop. Down goes Jay again. Jay Uso rolled to the outside. You see the pace starting to slow down a little bit as this high offense action has taken a toll on both of these superstars. And it's still a shock to see main event Jey Uso here on SmackDown riding solo tonight, just as Carmelo Hayes is! Jey Uso catching Melo with a super kick. You notice no Trick Williams here at ringside, just as it was last week and on Saturday, Melo continuing to fight these US title bouts alone. You gotta give him credit. Jay now on the top. Melo trying to knock him down to size. Jay out of the way. Look to go sidestep in. Carmelo Hayes, however, tilt the world face first. Melo into the cover to retain the title. It's not over yet. Carmelo Hayes and Jay Uso leaving everything in between those ropes. Jay off another sidestep. 
Carmelo Hayes might have got rocked. Or he certainly would have lost that shot. Jey Uso pops him up and catches him with a neck breaker to win the gold. Sustained momentum has been hard to find throughout this matchup. Both these men, like a pendulum going back and forth. Jey Uso, however, feeling confident, starting a rally here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Don't want to turn your back on the champion, however. Carmelo Hayes grabbing a hold of main event Jey Uso and brings him right into the corner with emphatic force. Jey Uso starting to look worse for wear. Again, fatigue setting in in these championship rounds here on SmackDown. Big time Uranagi by Melo. Nothing pretty about it, just effective. Carmelo Hayes, somebody who loves to take things to the air, has such a finesse about what he does in between those ropes. Getting down and gritty with that maneuver. Maybe outpowering Jey Uso is Melo's way to victory tonight. Another scoop and a slam. Jay's looking up at the lights here in Raleigh. Melo could be looking for nothing but net. Here he goes. Jay Uso with a counter. Melo might have to think on his feet, but Jay Uso had the scouting report. The same maneuver that has retained Melo the United States Championship time and time again does not work out at least just yet. Well, there's Melo trying to fight through the pain, fight through the punishment, realizes there is a sense of urgency developing in this matchup. Not trying to allow a rally from tonight's challenger in main event Jay. Jay Uso creating a little bit of separation. He's got to take advantage of that misstep by Melo. Off the power bomb of the nothing but net. Starting to unload in the corner. You want to talk about nothing pretty. Look no further. Some closed fist. A couple of boots to the heart. Or shall I say the soul of the United States champion. Jay off the middle. Buckle headbutt from a wild Samoan. Now it's Melo looking up at the lights. He's in trouble. Uso splash by Jay. We have a new United States champion. What a shocking turn of events here on Thursday Night Smackdown. Oh, how fast the tides can change. Carmelo Hayes issues yet another open challenge. Unfortunately, his luck runs out on Halloween night. The new United States Champion main event, Jey Uso, arrives on the blue brand and is taking home gold. An exciting main event. It was a trick for Melo, a treat for Jay, a new piece of hardware. It's just him, Oos.